Longtime overdose prevention advocate Sarah Blythe knows marijuana isn't a cure-all for issues with addiction and overdose, but she says it can help some people. That people use it for sleeping, they use it for pain, they use it for trauma. Um, instead of sometimes uh, using it instead of opiates. This week, the High Hopes Cannabis Dispensary relaunched after a years-long hiatus. It started in 2017 as a harm reduction program in Vancouver's downtown east side. Organizers distribute marijuana as an alternative to street drugs. The program ended when cannabis was legalized, but now it's back. Health Canada has granted it a license to distribute medical marijuana. It's really a small piece of the puzzle of the safe supply that's needed. What we need is safe supply of everything. Lyde says the goal is to eventually branch out and distribute other drugs safely. She says bold action is needed to provide a safe supply of the toxic street drugs that have killed so many in BC. I'm here in the downtown east side where one group is making those bold moves already. The Drug User Liberation Front has spent a month running a compassion club selling tested drugs to members, but federal authorities are not condoning their actions. Eris Nix is a co-founder of the group. The club has been selling unadulterated cocaine, heroin and meth. She says they haven't seen a single overdose from their products, which are acquired via the dark web. It's only been running for a month is that it is improving people's, uh, you know, social and health outcomes. Uh, folks are doing better on this program than they would with a medicalized safe supply model. They're using less drugs, they're spending less money, they're committing less crime, etc. The group spent a year applying for a federal exemption to drug rules that would allow them to sell these substances on a non-profit basis to club members. On late in July, they got the answer from Health Canada, no. Health Canada, in a statement to CBC, says that requested exemption would have allowed the purchase of illegally produced controlled substances from illegal vendors. Supplying drugs from illegal vendors is not a viable option for the protection of public health and the maintenance of public safety. Nix calls that Kafkaesque. They can't get the drugs from a legal source, so they're seeking judicial review of the decision. You know, we'll do whatever we have to by any means necessary to take care of our community. About six British Columbians die every day because of toxic drugs. Action, she says, can't wait. Liam Britton, CBC News, Vancouver.